Hey guys, happy Wednesday or Thursday, whatever day it is for uh, for you guys today. Uh, I know I couldn't be with you guys today. I am off having all of the fun in uh, Nashville, where there is currently a um, hurricane or tornado warning. I'm not sure which. In any case. Uh, this is what you guys are going to be working on today. Um, I told you guys that I would have an explanation set up for you guys. I want to make sure that I walk you guys through this because it is something that you need to know. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a little mini lecture and then I'm going to send you on your merry way to work by yourself. So today, as you can see, what we are going to be working on is something called a dramatic structure or dramatic speech. So if you look in plays, most of the information that you guys are going to get, that's going to be expressed through what characters say, through their words, uh, through their dialogue, and then through what they do, through their actions. But you do want to keep in mind that on a deeper level, that a lot of times playwrights, especially Shakespeare, are going to use special forms of dialogue. Uh, those are called dramatic speeches. So sometimes that will be to advance the plot. So it will take you from... Um, one understanding of something to the next. It's almost like a stepping stone uh, to discuss themes. So a lot of times those big long out drawn out speeches are gonna be um, tied into overall ideas and themes that we're looking at for the text uh, or, to or to provide insight to a, a characters, a characters, a character's emotions or motivation. So just keep that in mind. We are going to be looking at three specific types of dramatic speeches. So if you look at the first one here, this is pronounced soliloquy. And what this is, is where a, a character is alone, okay? They're alone. Nobody else is with them on the stage. And they give a lengthy speech talking about their, their deep and their true thoughts and feelings. So you want to picture this like you are in your bedroom by yourself and you are having an out loud conversation with yourself about your true thoughts and feelings. So it would almost be like the times that you are sitting alone thinking about things and you're thinking about them in a way that sounds like a long conversation. If you were to say those things out loud, that is what a soliloquy is. So if you think of probably the most famous of them, um, is, you know, you have the guy and he's standing alone on stage and he's holding the skull to be or not to be. That is the question. Um, that is part of a very lengthy soliloquy. Nobody is on stage with that person. They are expressing their deepest thoughts and feelings, their true desires. And the reason that they feel free to do that is because there are no other characters around to overhear what these deep thoughts and desires and feelings are, okay? From there, we have asides. We've talked a little bit about asides, um, especially with Prospero. Prospero is uh, a character that speaks to himself a lot in asides. Um, and then when you are telling secrets. So when you're looking at what asides are, the easiest way to remember what an aside is is that it is something that is said to the side. So it's a brief remark often addressed to the audience, but it's meant to be kept from other characters. So let's say that there are four people in a room and I am one of them. And I want to say something to one of the other four people in the room, but I don't want two of these people to hear it. I might lean over to one of these people and say, I'm so bored. Do you want to get out of here? Two of the characters on stage, on stage or in this scenario, can't actually hear what's going on. Um, but one character can. It's something that is meant for not all of the characters to hear. It's almost like secret keeping or talking to yourself quietly. Um, they are usually not long. You're usually gonna find that they are somewhere between one and five lines because nobody's really gonna whisper to themselves or to another person for longer than that. And then a monologue. A monologue is 
Okay, so if you have, ah, uh, this is getting down to root words. If you have a dialogue, okay, you are dealing with a conversation between at least two people. If you have a monologue, you are dealing with a conversation, but only one person, mono, is talking. So a lengthy speech by one character that is delivered to other characters, okay, who are on stage. So a, a soliloquy is going to be when those people are by themselves, they are talking to themselves about their own thoughts and feelings. A monologue is going to be kind of like that, but they are going to be talking to other people. So other people can hear what they're saying. Other people can hear um, what they mean. They are talking to other people. They know that other people can hear them, okay? So what you're gonna do, there is a table that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, these dramatic speeches show up in a lot of different places uh, over the course of the Tempest. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your textbook, okay? To fill out the chart that's on the bottom half of this to help identify and understand what is going on here. So what we are going to do is I am going to do this on your behalf, okay? I'm going to do this on your behalf. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to follow along in your book so that you can understand what's happening. So if you look, this is going to give you lines. In this particular case, IV, that is four. So act four, scene one, and really there's only one scene, so you don't need to worry about anything else. Lines 60 through 75. Okay, 60 through 75. And if you look at this, what you are going to see is that the speaker in this case, this is part of that weird play that I told you guys to kind of ignore. Um, Iris is speaking in these lines, in lines 60 to 75. Okay. Now what you want to look at, okay, a summary of the lines. What you guys are going to do is you guys are going to look at those lines and you are going to see what exactly is happening. Okay. So you're going to summarize what's going on. You're going to say what type of speech is it? Is it a monologue, a soliloquy, or an aside? And who is the intended audience? So in this particular case, the speaker that we're dealing with here is Iris. Okay, this is part of the play. Iris, um, if you guys remember, is um, the messenger of the gods. So is going to start this off and is going to communicate something. Okay, so if you look, this is really an introduction, the summary of lines here, and you can write this down, this will be helpful to you. It's an introduction to um, Ceres, who is the Roman goddess of earth and ag agriculture. And then when Juno comes down, where it says Juno descends, it actually means like um, Juno is going to like be lowered down from the ceiling so that you can see Juno, um, is going to introduce Juno as well, okay? So looking here in the summary of lines, you have Iris who is introducing and um, kind of praising a series and then is going to do the same for Juno. Now, as far as the type of speech goes, okay, it's 15 lines long. So this is not, this is not, um, it's not a secret, okay? And it doesn't say aside in front of it because anything that's an aside, I'll give you a hint, is going to have little brackets around it that say aside right before it happens. Um, so we know that this is either going to be a monologue or a soliloquy. Now, the difference is we need to figure out is Iris talking to other people or is Iris talking to Iris? Now we know that everyone is watching this play. We know that Iris is addressing series. And so what we do is we look and see, okay, we know it's not an aside, okay? 
If it were a soliloquy, a character would be alone on the stage, but we know that Iris is not alone. So it's a lengthy speech by one character and it's delivered to other characters who, who are on stage. So it's going to be delivered to Ceres, Prospero, Ferdinand, Miranda, Ariel, all of these characters that are watching. So this is going to be a monologue, okay? So you have your speaker as Iris, your summary of lines. Iris is introducing Ceres and Juno and praising them. The type of speech here is going to be a monologue. And the intended audience, who is Iris speaking to? Iris is speaking to, at this point, Prospero, Ferdinand, Miranda, and Ariel. Okay, so what you guys are gonna do, if you look, there are one, two, three, four, five, five of these that you guys are going to look at um, just as a hint. And I know that I already kind of mentioned this. Uh, what you guys should see in the places where you're looking for asides, it is always going to say, it is going to tell you, hold on, it is going to tell you that this is an aside. Okay, it's going to tell you that this is an aside. Now, what that's going to look like for you guys, okay, it's going to have brackets, and right before the text, it's going to tell you that it's an aside. It looks like this, okay? So if you see this, and it's usually in, it's usually in italics, if you see this that says aside before a character is speaking, you're going to know that that's really where you're gonna have those aside, okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to work through the remaining five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, maybe six, one, two, three. Five. I don't know, because I did the first one. Just kidding. So you're going to work through the remaining five, and then you're going to answer these questions. And what you want to do is you want to kind of figure out what you believe to be true about this. Okay? You're going to answer these questions about Shakespeare's stylistic choices. Okay? When you think about Prospero's role and what he is responsible for, why do you think it makes an aside a really interesting way for him to speak? Also, looking at Ariel's role through the play, how does that lend itself to asides? So really those two questions are going to deal with asides and how that works. I am going to make sure that there is a live link for you guys to go ahead and submit this when you are done. Um, I know that I told you guys that you didn't have to turn it in until it is completed, but once you are done with this today, then it will actually be completed and it will be time for you guys to go ahead and submit that. So you guys will need to have that submitted by the time that you get to class on Monday. All right. Have a great weekend. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll still be checking my email so you can let me know. Um, and I will see you guys on Monday.